What is up? Thanks for being here. Uh, no twins tonight, but we've got minor leagues to talk about, and we'll talk plenty about that. This one's this one's for the sickos, the real sickos. <laughs> All y'all only interested in digging into these minor league uh, results and highlights. Here's Jair Camargo. Of course, I had to show you his home run. He had two home runs on Tuesday. He had another home run tonight. And you know I got to give you at least some of this. Uh, Camargo Trot and him and Junior Severino are especially having some fun together. Uh, speech, speaking of Severino, this guy, he's becoming a lot more interesting. He's striking out less. He's walking more. We'll take a look at some of his numbers in just a sec. But walked twice today. Already has set a career high in a season in walks. A 368 OBP. He's a switch hitter with pretty even platoon splits. 845 OPS versus lefties. 834 versus righties. In the Wichita Wind Surge game, two outs, two strikes. Why not? Why not try this? Two of the biggest guys in the entire organization, Carson McCusker and Ricardo Olivar, pull off a double steal. Olivar, who's like going to be a cult hero in Wichita if he keeps this is his third game, and each game he's done something notable. Uh, stealing home, Ricardo Olivar, a catcher. Uh, and Carson McCusker is like nine feet tall. Right? He's 6'8, but two of the biggest dudes to ever pull that off, I, I imagine. Uh, he, McCusker also hit a opposite field home run in this one. He's having a nice go of it. He has 818 OPS. Uh, had a really great July. Tanner Hall, though, nine strikeouts tonight. Uh, well, this game was in progress. Through six innings, he had nine strikeouts. I think he was going to be done at that point probably, but you know, I'll have to update you down in the comments if he continued to pitch. What an outing, though. Uh, Twins 2023 fourth-round pick. Uh, there's a lot of excitement coming around this guy as potentially somebody they could really build up. The overall numbers are pretty bad, but nine strikeouts tonight. He has 32 strikeouts in his last 19 and two-thirds innings. And as part of this outing tonight, he actually had an immaculate inning where he threw all nine strikes, three strikeouts in the inning. What an outing from Tanner Hall. Real quick, we're going to take a look at the lineups of each of these full-season affiliates tonight. I just want to call out a player in each of them who is their defensive identity is changing somewhat. Chris Williams, uh, who's been around for a while, you may kind of mainly think of him as a first baseman, DH, who catches some. He's caught a lot more this year. That's actually been his primary position, uh, 35 games behind the plate. He's also playing outfield. I think this is the first time in his career he's been playing outfield. Uh, 11 games in left field, played left field tonight. Uh, he had a nice game at the plate, too. We'll take a look at that in a moment. So Chris Williams knocking on the door of the big leagues. Uh, you know, been been in Triple A a minute now, and trying to kind of add some more defensive flexibility, even pitch the game. <laughs> so credit to him for uh, being willing to step up and do that. Uh, for Wichita, interesting one to me is that Luke Keishaw has been playing a lot of first base. He's been DHing a good amount. Uh, he started off the year pretty much primarily only DHing. I think that was because he was he had some kind of a back injury that wasn't really letting him play the field, but he it wasn't bothering him hitting. Um, but now that he's up in double a, uh, that back injury doesn't seem to be bothering us, him as much. He is still DHing a decent amount, but the last nine times he's played the field, they've all been at first base. And this is a guy who is mainly a second baseman. Usually think of him as second baseman, but has played quite a bit of center field as well. So, you know, he's got the athleticism to play higher up the defensive spectrum than first base. So it's kind of interesting that they're working him in here. Uh, the bat's been tremendous. A uh, guy who actually was, uh, that was something that came out from Dan Hayes that uh, the Twins discussed him potentially in a trade for Eric Fetty of the White Sox. I was kind of thinking, I actually was trying to put together a trade idea to talk about him, um, and I was expecting to do that, but I that kind of fell apart with my trade deadline ramp up. Couldn't put together something that really made sense to me, but he is a guy that if you think about it and you really try to drill down and say, all right, if we were to take the exercise of saying who's the most kind of redundant of the very valuable prospects that the Twins have, I think you would come up with Luke Keyshaw. Again, keeping in mind that you always have to give something good to get something good. Uh, but, of course, the trade deadline has passed, so that's all under the bridge. But kind of remember that. Keep that in the back of your mind for the off season. I wonder if they might revisit that. Not that I'm trying to get rid of Luke Keyshaw. Um, and I think they really like him. The, from what I've, the quotes that I've read from the team about Luke Keyshaw, they seem very satisfied with how he's uh, worked and how he's done. And already in Double A, I mean that 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 speaks volumes too. Playing really well. But again, just want to call it. He's been playing a lot of first base of late. It's 
uh, kind of odd, kind of odd. But switching on over to the Colonels lineup, you know, also feel free to take a look at these lineups while we're talking about them too. You get a good idea of uh, who's kind of playing for these teams. No Walker Jenkins uh, today. Not sure, you know, if there's any kind of a reason by that. We'll just kind of assume that it was a regular day off. Uh, he's recently promoted up to Cedar Rapids. Uh, but Rain Down Cone is the guy I want to talk about because when he was with Fort Myers, it seemed very firmly that the Twins viewed him as a third baseman. Now, you know, a lot of what happens is it depends on the guys around you. where what, uh, That's going to dictate a lot of where you're going to play in the field. And he has really been primarily a shortstop, almost exclusively a shortstop for Cedar Rapids. Uh, you see there are 52 starts or 52 games, excuse me, that's the overall games listed at shortstop and only 28 at third now. Uh, so he went from playing a ton of third to primarily playing shortstop. I think that's interesting to note for Rain Doan Cone. Uh, Brandon Winokur is a guy who was kind of splitting time for Fort Myers between shortstop and center field with a little bit of right field mixed in there, some third base. Now he has also uh, seems to have really shifted to primarily playing shortstop. 47 of his games have been at shortstop as opposed to 18 at, at other positions. So he went from kind of moving around to let's just stick him at shortstop. Um, I still don't think it's very likely that Winokur like ends up there long term because I mean hardly there. You, you, it's very easy to say that about any shortstop. I'd probably say the same thing about Don Cone, uh, but down in the low minors here, um, you know, and, and as long as they're not completely butchering, which I don't think either of them are, you don't want to have that happen because it'd be bad for your pitching staff. But they're doing enough uh, to kind of keep that pathway open. I don't know that they're gonna continue to progress up the ladder as shortstops, but I think it's interesting that they both have gone from, you know, playing shortstop, but, you know, mixing in mostly other positions to really laser-focused on playing shortstop. Uh, so those were the lineups from tonight as well, in case you were interested. Ah, Junior Severino. I forgot, I wanted to kind of close with this, swinging back to Junior Severino and his plate discipline and his strikeouts. You can kind of see this is his entire career. This is from Fangraphs, by the way. Uh, with the walk percentage and the strikeout percentage. You know, he was a guy that was pretty even, drew a good amount of walks. He was always a pretty good uh, on-base guy drawing walks. Struck out a bit, but not a ton until he got up to double A. That really accelerated. Um, you know, that is a big jump from high A to double A. You know, I'm not sure he probably also was trying to hit for more power, it seemed like, around then. And then last year in 2023, you know, he led the minor leagues in home runs, but it was with a pretty alarming strikeout rate at double A and triple A, especially in triple A, uh, you know, with this his short sample with the Saints, but it was a 36.6 K percentage for Junior Severino in his first taste at triple A. Was walking almost 10% of the time, though, uh, so he's doing a decent job there. This season, you can see he's taken a huge step forward, uh, has slashed the K rate down to 28.3. You know That's still uh, quite a bit of strikeouts, but for a guy who hits with as much power and is as dangerous as Junior Severino is, I think you can live with that. And then the walk percentage of 13.9%, a nice jump up, kind of going back to you know his Cedar Rapids days where he was more of an on-base guy getting on base a ton. So... Yeah, Junior Severino, as he's kind of moved up, um, some doors have closed defensively. You know, he's definitely not going to be a second baseman. I don't think we're going to see that. Third base is probably out of the question, but of course in this organization the Twins probably don't really need to look there anyway. So he is looking like probably only a first base DH, so that's kind of hurt his prospect value. But on the flip side, if he can continue to do this and show that he isn't as maybe risky or as high high variance. You know, there is a higher floor there if he can be a, a good on-base guy and not strike out quite as much. Um, and maybe maybe his success isn't as fluky as it maybe could have seen last year. I, I understood some of the people who kind of naysayed that season he had last year. Um, but again, I think he is becoming more interesting than he's getting credit for. Um, and I'm just excited to see what's to come from Junior Severino. Moving on over to just the rundown of the info tonight. Um, I have an asterisk next to Tanner Hall here because I'm recording this with the Muscles game in progress. They had a bunch of weather. They didn't get underway until 9.30 their local time. They were only going to play a seven-inning game tonight. 
Um, Andrew Morris had a rough go of it. That's probably the most notable thing. Gave up six runs, walked four, which is very uncommon for Andrew Morris. Um, Darren Bowen, it's just been rough. It's been rough. Uh, one of the guys that came over in the Polanco trade who the Twins really liked, even as an amateur, um, but it's not been not been really going going well for him with Cedar Rapids, unfortunately. Uh, Chris Williams, who we talked about earlier, had two doubles and a walk tonight for the Saints, who had multiple guys that played well. We saw we saw Camargo, we saw Severino, but um, Deshaun Kersey Jr. had another good game for them. Um, yeah, the Saints are clicking right now. Um, the Colonels were sh- no hit through eight innings, but Gabriel Gonzalez uh, got a double. There was another hit in the ninth inning as well, so they did the score run. And then the Muscles game, keep in mind, again, that one was in progress, but I wanted to throw in there Ricks and Wingrove. Had a double and a home run. Uh, Twins were off. Saints won. Surge and Colonels lost. And it looks like the muscles are going to win. Fingers crossed. Uh, But thanks for being here. Thanks for checking this out. Really appreciate you. We'll talk again soon.